Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist, a diabetes educator, and a metabolism expert. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the top 7 best to-go foods for diabetics. Let's jump right into it. This is John, a 45-year-old middle-aged man. Recently, John received some unwelcome news from his doctor. He was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Due to that news, John now has astounding perseverance and determination to incorporate healthier options in his diet. Unfortunately, like everyone else who is on a diet, everything looks a hundred times more tempting. Plus, John leads a hectic life. Early in the morning before the rooster crows, he is at work and he stays in his office till ungodly hours late at night when the moon is already in full bloom. Because of this busy lifestyle, John barely has time to cook healthy food and must depend on a take on almost always or delivery. What John needs to know is which types of to-go foods are healthier options for him and for his family so that he can take control of his diabetes and obtain better outcomes. Well, we should not be eating out when we have diabetes. We know that, right? But I'm sure many of us still get meals from restaurants and you still would like to know which foods are heart attack waiting to happen or which foods are more wholesome and nourishing for our bodies. Let's get right into our list of some of the healthier, not so fully healthy, but to-go food options for better blood sugar management. That's if you have to eat outside. First up are chicken wraps. Wraps containing whichever protein you prefer. Well, of course, the perfect scenario would be finding a shop that actually sells wraps that are whole grains or a fiber tortilla or a low carb type of bread. I know some may think that the grains are bad for you, but if you strongly believe that that's the case and they spike your blood sugar, just go with the lettuce wrap. Well, not every waiter will also understand what you're asking, but there's no harm in trying, right? One popular fast food chain, which is Wendy's, for example, sells a chicken wrap with flour tortilla, which is a lower carb. Ideally, the wrap should contain lean protein like a chicken breast and a reasonable portion of vegetables. Let me ask you all, who doesn't love what takeaway from a favorite Chinese restaurant? A healthier option next time will be their steamed chicken with broccoli. Broccoli is packed with tremendous amounts of fiber and antioxidants, and they can help reduce your blood glucose levels. Plus, steamed foods are healthier than deep fried foods, like you know. They contain less fat and vegetables, vegetable oils and cholesterol. Steamed chicken with broccoli will most likely be the healthier option in comparison to, for example, lemon chicken or like a sweet and sour chicken, etc. You know, these are, these are usually fried before being coated in their sauces. Now, these sauces are also, they contain a lot of amount of sugar. In addition to that, just remember how much rice you're eating next to it because they always come with the rice right Chinese food try to choose with uh, go with the brown rice or if possible no rice well how about the pizza who can hate pizza right diabetics usually steer clear of this tempting monstrosity monstrosity oh it's easy to understand why right pizzas are generally known to be loaded with fats and sugar and carbs well that's generally true let me tell you a secret though that depends on what type of crust and toppings you choose as well as the portion size if you have to have pizza opt for a thin, thin crust whole wheat high fiber crust whenever possible as this is healthier than those thicker the deep pan or cheese stuffed crusts choose vegetables like mushrooms or spinach for the toppings instead well you might say Pizza isn't pizza without meat though, you know? Well, that's kind of true. And if that's the case for you, go for lean meat like a chicken breast. If you didn't know, yeah, they put chicken breast on pizza. That will be a lot healthier and a delicious option. Stick to one slice only if you have to have pizza though. You have to control your portion. Now we're gonna move on to the Japanese food, guys. Let me tell you a cool trick. 
drink miso soup before everything else. The research has shown that people eat up to 20% less this way because it tricks their brain into thinking that you aren't as hungry. Well, this soup theory is not specific to the miso soup, but soups in general are filling. So it's a good way to start your dinner, for example, and then move on to the main menu. It contains a lot of sodium, some soups, so you have to be careful. If you have to have that soup outside, you have to consume much less salt rest of the day or ask for a low salt option. And don't order sushi with fried foods like tempura that are rich and creamy like mentai sauce. Instead opt for healthier options like salmon, tuna and veggies. Salmon and tuna are rich in omega-3 and this fatty acid not only improves your heart health but can even prevent the nerve-related problems such as diabetic neuropathy. Lastly, add a salad to your meal for an extra boost of fiber. Some of us aren't very intuitive when it comes to using chopsticks, so using these might actually help you slow down when you eat, which is an important part of technique to prevent overeating. Next up, we have Indian food. Now, this could seem like a minefield, but hear me out. Dal, for example, contains lentils and lentils help regulate the blood sugar levels like we discussed before. They give you a better glucose control with less spike, can even lower your blood pressure. So dal can be quite oily though, so you have to consider sharing the portion and go for like a chapati or roti instead of a non bread if you have to have bread. No, hopefully not, uh, because these generally contain less carbs. So if you're craving meat, Tandiri chicken is uh, reasonable. The chicken is coated in a light yogurt sauce that is spicy and then grilled before serving. A healthier option for a diabetic, I would say. If you're a sandwich fan, then we have some great tips for you as well. Usually it will be best to ask for only lettuce uh, if possible. If not, half a portion of the bread, or at least you can ask for a whole grain version of that bread. Also opt for loads of veggies like, like lettuce and lean meat, like a chicken breast. And then chicken breasts might not be as delicious, but it's definitely miles healthier than processed meats or meatballs. And believe me, your taste buds will eventually change. You're not gonna crave for those processed meats anymore. According to American Heart Association, the processed foods were discovered to account for up to 70% of the daily sodium intake of an average American, and not to mention the nitrates in there. Because the diabetics are more prone to high blood pressure, you have to really watch for your sodium as well, not just your blood sugar, because your heart attack, your stroke risk, your kidney disease is also dependent on the sodium load as well. You can also choose mustard instead of mayo in when you go out and low-fat mayo is acceptable. Let's talk about burgers. Well, they're fast, they're convenient, and it's a popular to-go food, right? So the million dollar question is, what is the difference between a healthy burger and an unhealthy one? A good question, right? Well, there is really no super healthy burger unless you go for like a turkey or salmon burger. If you have to have one, just go for the healthier options. Try to ask for smaller sized uh, whole grain buns or some English muffin or something, right? They generally contain less carbs. And if you are feeling adventurous, try a burger without the bun, with some lettuce instead of like, uh, use, the, use the lettuce to, to sandwich them instead of bread. As you mentioned earlier, try to avoid full fat mayonnaise and they contain just a whopping amount of calories. Uh, even if you're on a high fat diet, that's gonna put you over the calorie limit. And of course, leaner cuts of meal will be your best option. So I hope these are healthier options. I hope you learned something today. Undeniably, it takes a lot of commitment and perseverance, especially when there's an insane amount of mud-watering foods out there. Let this be a journey we embark on together for a healthier me and a healthier you. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with your family and friends. Let us know in the comments below what you would like to see in our next video. Until then, take care and I'll see you in the next one. All right, thank you for watching and I want you to be more informed and more educated. So to do that, go ahead and watch this next video right here.